got a new camera, you guys. I'm so excited, you guys. I finally got my camera replaced. Um, my daughter had gotten me one for Christmas and some way, somehow it fell. I think what happened is I had it on the stand, but then I had this stand on something else and I think the weight, um, it fell and then it screwed up the audio. So I had to change it in and get a new one. So I did do a little bit of an upgrade just because I had to get a new one anyways and I found it didn't have a flip up thing and it was really hard to kind of gauge like where I was in the camera view. So I did get one with the flip up thing just so that it's a little bit easier for me to be vlogging. But I think I'm gonna love it, you guys. So I'm so excited. I feel like I'm kind of like leveling up in, in my YouTube. You know, finally got a good camera, you guys. So it does need to um, charge up, but I just wanted to insert this little clip on the day that I got this new camera. So we will see you guys in the next clip. All right, you guys, we are going to start off by making some wings in our air fryer. And I'm just gonna put a little coating of a coconut flour with some salt and pepper. Um, I do like having my wings um, just naked, but I thought today that I would try the coconut flour with some salt and pepper. And I was actually quite surprised on how it turned it out. It kind of gave it a little bit of like a breaded um, taste to it and it was really, really good. So I'm glad I added that. Uh, I made probably most of it with the breading and then I had a few left over that I did in a second batch, just plain naked. But I highly recommend doing this. As you guys know, I am allergic to almonds, so I cannot have almond flour and that is why I made this with the coconut flour. But I am just going to um, dip these in the coconut flour. I didn't do an egg wash or anything like that. Just dip them in one by one and then put them in my air fryer and let them cook for a while. So I ended up cooking these on my chicken bone in button, which was 380 for 25 minutes. So about halfway through, I would say about 10 minutes in, I ended up flipping them all over. And then I ended up cooking them for, I think about another 10 minutes. It wasn't quite the full 25 minutes. Um, I did check the temperature, uh, internal temperature to make sure that they were all cooked through. So it was about 20 minutes that I ended up cooking these chicken wings. As you guys know, I'm still learning with this air fryer, but I absolutely love it. So I had this creamy garlic um, wing dressing in my cupboard that I haven't used. So I thought that I would give that a try. And because it was a new bottle, I had to shake it to get some of it out. It is pretty low in carbs. I think it worked out to be like three carbs per a quarter of a cup. So with the amount that I used, I'm sure it was probably, um, I would say one carb. So I just mix that all up. I don't like my wings overly saucy. Um, I usually actually dip my wings. So I'm not sure why I even put these on my wings because uh, I'm usually like a dipper. Are you guys like a dipper or do you like your sauce on your wings already? Let me know down in the comments. But these are them, you guys, the final product and they were absolutely amazing. If you haven't had wings in the air fryer, you must. Next is going to be a lava cake, you guys. So this tasted absolutely amazing, full of flavor. We are starting with one egg. This, e this recipe was so easy, you guys. I absolutely loved it. It made it for one as well too, which was perfect. And then I will add two tablespoons of cacao powder. And I will have this recipe linked down below for you guys, um, so you don't have to write down what I'm saying. I will have the recipe linked down below so that it's easy for you guys to find. 
I also added um, two tablespoons of water right here as well too. And then I will be adding two and a half tablespoons of erythritol. I use the Swerve. You guys know that I love using the Swerve. I always have a link down below through Amazon. I find that it's actually the cheapest through Amazon. So if you go down further in my description, you will always see the link that I have. So two and a half tablespoons of that. And then I will be using um, one teaspoon, sorry, one tablespoon of the flax seed meal. Now the recipe calls for flax meal, so I'm not exactly sure of the difference, but that's what I had on hand and it still tasted really, really good. And then after that, I am going to be adding a half of a teaspoon of baking powder. And this is a nice easy recipe because you literally just put everything together in one bowl. Then I am adding about an eighth of a teaspoon of vanilla. I just add a little splash of it and a little splash also of salt, which you will see a little later on. I forgot the coconut oil that I had melted in my microwave. So that's one tablespoon of the coconut oil. And then here is where I put a dash of the pink Himalayan salt. So really, really simple, all in one bowl. Make sure that it's an oven safe bowl because we are putting this bowl in the air fryer. So you're going to want to make sure that your air fryer is preheated at 350 and we are just going to whisk that all together until everything is well combined. And then we are going to put it in the air fryer at 350 for eight to nine minutes. And look at that, you guys, it turned out absolutely amazing. It was so ooey and gooey on the inside and it tasted legit like a brownie, a fudgy brownie. So it was a perfect, perfect size for one person and a great dessert. All right, next we are going to be making air fryer keto pretzel bites, you guys. And I was so excited to make this because it actually uses coconut flour in this recipe. So I was actually really thrilled to find this recipe and it tasted so good. So we are going to be starting with a quarter of a cup of coconut flour. So we are going to put that in our bowl. I also get this coconut flour off of Amazon. My link is down below for that. Really, really cheap. I find it the best priced on Amazon as well for that. So we are gonna put that in our bowl. Next, we are going to add a teaspoon of baking powder. We are gonna to add to our mixture. And then after our baking powder, we are going to add um, some garlic salt. I actually ended up using garlic salt here because I didn't have any garlic powder. I will also have this recipe linked down below, um, but I just had garlic salt on hand and that's what I used and it turned out perfectly fine. I find it actually a little bit more flavorful, but I love salt. <laughs> so that was really, really good to have on hand. And then we are going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. Um, this is just a new product that actually I just got because I noticed a lot of recipes actually used it. So it is quite expensive, but I think it's worth it. Like I've used it already in a couple recipes, so it is good to have on hand. So we are adding a quarter teaspoon of the xanthan gum. And then that is it for the mixture. So we are just gonna whisk, whisk that together, set it aside. Then you're going to put six ounces of shredded mozzarella cheese in a bowl. And then I'm going to put that in the microwave. I think I put it in for, I wanna say 20 seconds, gave it a quick stir and put it in for another 10 seconds. And then after that, it was a perfect consistency. So I'm just about to put it in the microwave and that is what it looks like when it comes out of the microwave. So it was all done. So I just kind of let it cool and um, kept on stirring it as well. And what I did is I added it to my dry mixture. 
Um, I don't know if it makes a difference. It said originally to add the dry mixture to the mozzarella cheese, but obviously the bowl was much bigger, so that's what I did. It still turned out really, really good. So I just add the mozzarella cheese in with my mixture, and then I'm going to add one egg here as well too. And then you're going to mix that all together really, really well. And then what I did after I mixed in the egg is I then transferred it over to my counter. You will hear, you will see here soon. And I just put a little bit more coconut flour on my counter and then just kind of kneaded it a little bit just so that be it became kind of like that dough consistency. So here I'm just putting a little bit of coconut flour, like I said, and putting it on my counter that I have cleaned and just knead it a little bit so that it makes it a little bit less sticky and more of like a dough consistency. And then I ended up I ended up putting them into cutting them into eighths, but then I actually had the idea that maybe I could do corn dogs wrapped in this as well too, as kind of like a pretzel corn dog. Um, so that's what I ended up doing. Um, I just kind of cut them and did some of the balls like in the pretzel bites. And then I set a couple aside in order to wrap hot dogs with this dough, I guess you would say. And they turned out amazing. The next time actually that I make these, I'm gonna do one, um, one recipe for these, which is the pretzel bites. And then I'm gonna do one full recipe and wrap them around hot dogs for like a corn dog recipe because they were absolutely delicious. So I'm definitely gonna do that next time. So that's just what I did. They all actually fit in the air fryer. Uh, this recipe was perfect for, I would say like, you know, two or three people. Um, but next time I would just do that because the corn dogs, they were really good. And that's one thing I miss. I absolutely love, love corn dogs. So then I'm just going to um, put some olive oil on the bottom of my air fryer. And you guys can also use some spray, um, like avocado spray if you have any, but I don't, don't have any, so I just did the olive oil. So you're gonna put that all on the bottom of your air fryer, and then you're just gonna put all of your pretzel bites in the air fryer as well.
All right, so these actually don't need to cook too long. Um, I had them for 350 and I ended up only cooking them for five minutes. They cooked really, really fast and they were absolutely perfect when I took them out. They were nice and golden brown and these were delicious. So I mentioned that I can't have almond flour so I was so happy when I found this recipe you guys and it was definitely really 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 good highly recommend and I definitely would make it again so what I did also when I took these out when they were warm is I actually ended up melting some butter and I ended up getting my coarse pickling salt that I have and I just put some melted butter over top of all of those and then put some coarse salt on top as well too. And that is definitely what made this recipe, you guys, is by putting the butter and um, like kind of the coarse salt on top. Mm, it was so good. So highly recommend making these as well when you guys have company over or if you need, need to take something over uh, maybe to somebody's house for uh, an appetizer. It's something that you guys can have and I guarantee it everybody else will probably love them as well and won't even know that they're keto honestly they're that good you would be surprised on how many people like you know when you try something different that they do complement your food so that is those you guys pretzel bites they turned out absolutely amazing so next we are going to start with an all-time favorite and it's jalapeno popper you guys they are one of my favorites and I love that they're keto so most important thing you guys <laughs> definitely is gloves wear gloves when you are making this recipe um, I've learned from experience and it's funny because Jimmy and I talk about this and he's done it as well too you know every time that you're not wearing gloves that is the time that you rub your eye. It happens all of the time, you guys. So make sure you put your gloves on. I actually wear the gloves throughout the whole entire recipe because I always do. It doesn't matter whether I'm done, you know, taking the seeds out. I wear gloves the whole entire time. Alright, so after all of the seeds are taken out of your jalapenos, then you will want to make the mixture that you're putting inside. I keep it fairly simple. I just use cream cheese and um, I also use the everything but the bagel seasoning and some just some salt and pepper, honestly. And usually I will put shredded cheese in with this mixture. But you will see at the end, actually, I already had them in the air fryer for less than a minute and I realized that I forgot the shredded cheese. So I took them back out and um, added the shredded cheese because, you know, you can't have jalapeno poppers without shredded cheese, you guys. I can't believe I forgot that. So I'm just adding the very last of my everything but the bagel seasoning. I've used it all. I'm completely 100% out of that seasoning so I will definitely have to get some next time that I am at Costco 
So I added some of that and we are just gonna mix it together you guys and add in a little bit of salt and pepper. And like I said, this is when you would add your shredded cheese as well too. Now some people will add their cooked bacon at this point as well too and slice it up um, into smaller pieces and add it with their cream cheese mixture. Um, but I, what I do is because not everybody in my family necessarily loves bacon, like I know it's, it's crazy. Um, out of the family of four, I would say two people don't and two people do. I absolutely love bacon. Um, but there's like, Jimmy is not a fan of bacon and my oldest daughter isn't too much of a fan of bacon as well. So I actually end up um, wrapping my jalapeno poppers in bacon because I usually do half with bacon and half without and that's why I don't add the bacon in with my mixture um, but you guys can feel free if everybody enjoys bacon in your family then you can do that and just add everything to the cream cheese mixture and then we're just going to fill the jalapeno poppers with that mixture and cook them in the air fryer and these turned out absolutely amazing in the air fryer I just love my air fryer so much, you guys. I can't even believe I waited this long. Like since, I bet you I probably haven't used our air fryer because we had an older one that kind of crapped out and it was probably for sure like two years that it sat up in our cupboard and didn't work and I thought you know what I don't think I'm going to need an air fryer like we can use our oven or we can use the barbecue or whatever but I am loving the air fryer, especially with steak. Oh my gosh, it tastes absolutely amazing. So I am loving the air fryer, you guys. So thank you so much for mentioning it to me and telling me that I need to get an air fryer because it is definitely one of my best purchases ever. And if you guys are interested in the air fryer that I have, I also have that link down below in um, my Amazon favorites. That's where I got it off of. Um, they, I think they even have actually a deal on right now. I think it's an extra 15% off. So check it out if you're in the market. I did my reviews on all of the air fryers and kind of did like a consumer report and the Consori brand that I ended up getting um, had the best overall rate for everything for long term for not breaking down um, everything like that it absolutely was really really highly rated um, so highly recommend this one like I said I am loving it right now so if you guys are in the market um, be sure to check it down check it out down below so now I'm just wrapping it in bacon and like I said I ended up using a half a slice for the jalapeno poppers that I wrapped in bacon so half of them I wrapped in bacon and then the other half I didn't because like I said there's a couple people in my family that don't like bacon which is unheard of it's like it's crazy I should actually shun them I can't even believe people don't like bacon um, I absolutely love it. So I even liked it prior to keto. And now that it's part of like my lifestyle, I love it even more. So we are just going to wrap those jalapeno poppers with the half a slice of bacon. And the other half we are just leaving plain. And then we are going to put them in the air fryer. And I ended up not cooking these actually too, too long. And they turned out so good. Um, usually I think in the oven, I think I cook them longer. Like I want to say I cook them for probably like 30, 40 minutes. So that is one thing that I noticed with the air fryer is that it definitely cuts down on cooking time and it doesn't like heat up my house because with all of these recipes, making them in the oven definitely would it would have like heated up my house, which is kind of nice. I like that as well too. So we are just going to put these in the air fryer and they all fit in really, really nice and snug. And <laughs> that I even set my air fryer and everything for this to start cooking. And you will see that I end up pulling it back open because I ended up forgetting um, the shredded cheese. But I ended up cooking these, um, I believe it was at 380. And I want to say it was for like six or eight minutes. So it wasn't that long at all. And I think that was kind of perfect. I set it for 12 minutes, but I believe I only ended up 
like six or eight minutes because I always like checking it halfway through. But yeah, this is where I realized that I forgot the shredded cheese, you guys. I thought it was so funny. I was like, I can't believe I did that. And of course, it's always on the day that you're recording, right? It, it can't be on the day that you're just making jalapeno poppers for yourself and not recording. Uh, so anyways, I had to add the cheese, but these turned out really, really good. Like I said, I think I cooked them for six or eight minutes, which was six or eight minutes, which was unbelievable. Like really, really cuts down on your cooking time. And these turned out so, so good. Actually, the rest of my family loved these so you will see the final picture here in a few seconds on how they looked they turned out amazing you guys so thank you so much for watching you guys i hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to hit that likes like button and subscribe thanks for watching